AV Reloader coming at you. I have a uh, somewhat quick video. Uh, I've been annealing, but it's been uh, salt bath annealing. And I had about 2,500 cases of 223 to anneal. And I did not want to do all of that uh, with the salt bath annealing method with the lead production pot because it's very time consuming and a little too tedious for me. So what I ended up getting was an anneal lease. Um, I, if I remember correct, it's like 250 bucks, um, shipped and it comes with a pan. I kind of messed up and ordered a pan for like 15 bucks. Uh, cause I didn't realize that it came with a pan. So that's my fault. Whatever. I mean, it is kind of nice to have two pans. Uh, this is a, a nice unit. Um, I don't remember. I did count how many 223 cases you could get in the hopper. Um, I want to say, gosh, I think it was right around 700, maybe 500. Um, completely loaded and it operated fine. No issues. Uh, my only complaint about this unit, um, only complaint so far. I've had this unit for about a month and a half, maybe two months, um, is right here. So let me take this out of there. So when you're doing like two, two, three cases, small cases like that, and I'll actually grab one, a couple here, and they drop, when the wheel drops them down into the pan, they'll fall right into that crack. Um, so I don't know, maybe if the pan was redesigned where maybe it could be, uh, this end right here, this part, uh, is maybe, uh, tilted back at a 30 degree angle or something, maybe. Um, but simple, easy fix, just use a carpenter's pencil, stick it under there like so, and it closes that gap completely. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I wanted to do this video because when I was running these cases, the this is sub 762 by 54R. Um, so they got the rim on them. When I was doing like my test run, uh, to make sure everything was set up good and, and whatnot before I uh, ignite the flame or the torch. Uh, this gap right here, uh, the rim was getting caught in and wasn't, wasn't spinning, uh, or it was spinning, but just a little bit. And then when the notch came around on the wheel to grab the case, uh, some of the cases were just sitting there, stuck there, because that little gap is just big enough to catch that rim and not really let it go if it's at the right angle. So I kind of came up with a quick, easy fix. Um, it's just throwing this quarter 20 washer on there, right right between the machine and, and uh, that small washer that you see. Here, let's see here. Try and get a pointer. <laughs> so this washer right here, uh, just put that other washer between the machine and that washer, and it'll make that gap bigger. Now, let me see if uh, I can get it to duplicate what it was doing uh, to me and kind of made me come up with this fix somewhat. Um, I do need to get a tripod for this uh, kind of stuff, maybe someday. Uh, so we'll run it here. It's running at four, I guess it's 40% because um, that's kind of what I got the timing figured out for these particular cases. So let's see if it actually does 
on video what it was doing earlier. And so far the first case is pretty much spinning. Had a little hiccup there. Of course, second case is gonna spin. So it's gonna make a liar out of me. That's fine, let's see. What uh man, they're all just gonna spin. I mean I guess messing with this a little bit. Huh, must have solved the uh issue, because now there's not really an issue. Uh, it almost got stuck there. You saw that. So, what, I mean, I don't know. This was just something real quick that I kind of came up with. Uh, it's only a few few pennies. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep that washer in there permanently. But, uh, so, here, come on. Of course, I dropped the whole thing. Pick it out of there. Well, let me readjust the camera here. Okay. Washing. All right, now put it back together. Do, 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 do. Uh -oh. Okay. So, like I said, this is this is a great machine saved me a lot of time it was kind of nice because i would load up the hopper and then uh just run it till the hopper uh got empty and then stop it and reload it take uh i don't know probably about a uh, half an hour to like 45 minutes to completely empty the hopper um so, let me see here. Do I have that set up with the flame correctly? Okay. So, there's other videos out there that'll go through the full setup on this. And you can change, change some certain settings and stuff. I'm not going to really go into that. Uh, I just wanted to show this kind of easy fix. But, you know, on camera, it's going to make a liar out of me. So... I'll run it with that washer on there. Should should run fine. You could probably file this instead of doing a washer, but whatever. I, I try not to modify equipment too much. So it appears to be doing okay. It's, you kind of see it's getting a little caught up and it still falls into that notch. So maybe I'll just leave well enough alone and take that washer off since it's appeared to be working fine. But that's that's about it. Um, like I said, it's a great machine. I ended up, because I have a full-size <clears throat> propane tank um, or bottle, whatever you want to call it, I ended up getting this hose uh, that adapts to the Neely's hose. This is set up for uh, put doing the little camp style uh, propane models. And you could actually store them in the back right here. They'll fit. Um, but uh, I had this thing, so I was like, well, I'm just gonna use that up and uh, you know, maybe just refill it once it's done. Um, so that, that's about it. Here's my messy uh, bench right here. This is kind of typically how it looks. Uh, not too much more stuff on it. Um, until next time, happy uh, shooting and have, have a great time. Talk to you later.